Hi, welcome back to SQL Server 2016 Administration. This is the section on server automation. In this section of the course, we'll start learning about SQL Agent and the basics of automation, and that's the overall controlling system. We'll then move into the specifics. We'll look at the jobs. We'll look at how schedules work with our jobs. We'll talk about operators and notifications and how we can inform our administrators of what's going on. We'll look at alerts and how these are automated events that react to something that happens. And then finally, we'll finish off with database mail and how we can communicate with anyone else. This is the video on SQL Server Agent. In this video, we're going to cover an overview of what SQL Server Agent actually is, how we can use it, and then we'll look at how we can configure it with a little demo. SQL Server Agent is actually a separate subsystem of SQL Server. Similar integration services or reporting service, separate area from the database engine that we've covered so far. Now, this subsystem has its own service count and potentially proxy accounts if you choose to use them. And it's designed to help administrators by automating the work that might need to be done on a regular basis. A SQL Server agent also has its own logging system separate from the main SQL Server database engine. The service count that you choose for SQL Server agent is similar to the one you might choose for the SQL Server database engine. Some people use the exact same account, but I recommend that you choose a separate one because you may need to grant additional rights. For example, we often use automation to perform some action on the network on another computer. It might be copying files, it might be something else. So we may need to add different permissions here that we may not want the core database engine to have. We'll also use this account for database mail, so that's another reason to have some separation. Separate from the service account, we have proxy accounts. And these are accounts that we can use for specific tasks inside of the SQL Server agent. We'll look at these in a little more detail when we get to jobs, but for now we will talk about how we can create a proxy account which does require a credential inside of the SQL Server, and then we'll perform some work with that proxy. Now, only sysadmins can create these proxy accounts. But these are part of the configuration of SQL Server Agent. Typically, the service is not started by default. Unless you set this up and when you installed SQL Server, uh, it does not start by default. So you may have to actually configure that in Windows setup. And then you may actually have to enable the store procedures for the agent as well. Now, this agent does control everything that happens in SQL Server separate from database engine. So it is kind of the controller for all the automation tasks we'll cover in this section. We also have alerts here, and we can forward these to another server, and we'll look at how we can configure them. And then we have the ability to delay automation until the server is idle, and we'll look at how we can configure that as well. Let's look at a little demo now. Here I have my SQL Server host computer. You'll notice I have the services app lit up. And you'll see that I have my database engine here for the different instances. Here's my default instance that's running. My SQL Server agent, however, is set to manual. It doesn't start by default. I did start this before the demo. If I wanted to change this permanently, I could come here and change the startup to be automatic. Certainly I can start, stop, and resume it from here as well. And I can check the service account. Now in this case, I have the SQL Server agent account for the NT service, which is one of those I chose during the installation. Now, I would not want to change the service account from here. I would want to do it from the SQL Server configuration manager to make sure that all the appropriate permissions are set. Now let's look at Management Studio and the configuration of SQL Server agent. Here I am in Management Studio, and I want to show you how we can configure this. The SP configure sort procedure is used to actually change the configuration of SQL Server. I have a number of items here, but the one that I want to note is Agent XPs. These are typically disabled by default, which would mean that I would have a run value and config value of zero here. I've actually changed these already to ensure that everything is running, and I do that by using the same SP configure, and I pass in the name of the item I want to change. So in this case, I would change it to one, then I would run reconfigure with override to enable that setting. This is how I get SQL agent weren't running. The agent itself is a first class folder inside of the instance. I've got the SQL server agent. I've got jobs, alerts, operators, proxies, and error logs. These are all subsystems. We'll cover some of these in additional modules. But for now, we want to look at a couple of items here. First one is the configuration of SQL server agent itself. And when the dialog appears, what we'll actually have is the setup for SQL server agent. You'll notice here we have a number of pages that we can look at, and each one of them has different items. The general page allows us to restart SQL Server agent if it stops unexpectedly, as well as restart SQL Server. The agent actually does this. And then we have the location of the error log here. We can include additional items, and we can certainly send a note to somebody through NetSend if there's an issue. In the Advanced tab, we have the ability to actually forward events to a different server. So if I had a different SQL Server instance I want to forward events to, I would check this, enter the instance name here, and then choose which events. Then I have the, addition, the option to define an idle CPU condition. We can set jobs to run when the CPU is idle, essentially when the server is idle. So here's where I would define that. So if CPU usage falls below 10% for more than 600 seconds, which is five minutes or 10 minutes rather, then I can do this. If I wanted to change this, perhaps I 
only care if it falls below 30%, I could do this. And if it's under there for five minutes, I could set that. It's my option to define what an idle condition is. We have the overall settings for our alert system. So I have database mail profiles that I would do here. Pagers, if I have those ability to do that. Uh, fail safe operator, if my other operator is not available. There's a, there's a number of options here that we won't go into any detail, but you can read about them. And they are useful for notifying somebody of, of an issue with your server. Now in our job system, we have the ability to shut down our system. So this would allow jobs 15 seconds to complete if we decide to shut down a single server. Obviously we can change this. The proxy count is disabled because we don't use this anymore in modern versions of SQL Server. We have proxies for individual types of jobs. Now SQL Server Agent is a separate process and subsystem and it actually must connect to SQL Server in the same way as any other user. So I have the ability to do an alias here if, if I need to for some reason. Perhaps I want a cluster or something else and I want to have some alias, I can do that here. And then lastly, we do keep history about what's happening in the SQL Server agent. So we have the ability to set some limits here and what this happens. As with everything, if I just change any settings, I should use the script button to capture the script of what I've changed. The other thing we want to look at is proxies. Now we've got a number of proxies here, and these are different types of jobs that we might run. So we have command exec jobs, which are essentially working from a command uh, prompt. We have replication jobs of various types, analysis servers, we have PowerShell, and then we have other things. For each of these, I have the ability to create a proxy. So in this case, I don't have a proxy, but I can create a new one. Here I would give it a name, like agent command exec proxy, something that helps me understand what this is. From the credential perspective, I need to pick a credential that we can use. So I think I have, oh, I don't have one there. For example, my packet demo user and use that one if I wanted to. So I could put the packed demo here, account there. And then when we ran these operating system jobs, they would run under the credential or under the rights of this packed demo credential. That's what I would do. And I would give then different rights that have the ability to set or grant access to the proxy account. I'm not going to do this as kind of an advanced feature, but it does allow me to run items under a proxy account as opposed to the SQL Server Agent account. By default, everything would run under the account that's running SQL Server Agent. So I have these proxies that I can set, and I can certainly set multiple proxies as well. The last thing is the error logs. These are separate error logs that are different from the SQL Server instance error log or the database engine error log. These are items that are specific to the SQL Server agent. You'll notice when the log file viewer pops up, I'm looking at the SQL Server agent log and the current log. And you can see here that I've got various items out here from the startup of the SQL Server agent. So we recover MSDB as the first thing that has to happen before we can go further. Uh, the agent then notes some of the metadata about the this instance itself, we're starting under the winters there. We don't have database mail. We don't have idle condition. These are very similar. This is different from the SQL Server error log. If I look at the current one there, these are all of the messages from the database engine itself. So SQL Server has its own agent log, and we've got the ability to configure where that is located and how we look at that.